How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're in battle versus Osha Watts in the Smogon Overused tier from the Discord server. Stick around till the end for a bonus battle and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good look out for Osha Watts. So they're going to lead off with Skeledurge, which is a good lead um, for my team. They, and I lead off with my Glorian Sloking. So not a bad matchup. Not the best matchup in the world either. Um, they do have that Persian as their dark type, so there's no point setting up a future site. We can Thunder Wave though, we may as well Thunder Wave. They go for a will o -Wisp, so they're clearly a will o -Wisp Hex set, which is good to know. Um, but I'm pretty sure Glorian Sloking can take any Hex as this thing wants to throw at us. Um, as we go for a Thunder Wave and we don't miss, which is nice. Paralyzing the Skeleton, which is great. So there we go. So next turn I'm going to go for a Chili Reception, because why not? We should um, still get outsped, which we do. They go for a Torch Song, does no damage, obviously, but it does give them a special attack boost, so we need to get, get rid of the Skeledurge ASAP. And what I'm thinking to do that is all oh, the, the, the their Throat Spray as well. Okay, so that's crap. And um, that means I can't hit them with Poltergeist from Golurk now, which is unfortunate. So we go for the Geo Reception so we can get a free switch in, which is great and all. Um, but what are we going to do to take on the Skeledurge? That's the real question. I want to go Head Smash Arcanine. And I am going to go ahead and smash Arcanine. I think that is the way to go forward. So let's go ahead and do that. Arcanine comes through. And I am just going to do that. I'm going to go straight for a head smash. I don't see any reason not to. If they Terra, they Terra. If they don't, then they don't. Then they go down. So they are going to Terrastalize. What type are they going to Terrastalize into to take a head smash, though? That's the real question. Probably Fairy, if I had to guess. But they're still not going to take it as well as they want to. They are Fairy, which is good to know. It's good to know they can't really hit us with anything um, stab. So they can't burn us. They can't really Torch Song us because we four times resist. And we go for the head smash, we don't miss, which is nice. And that's going to do a solid 50% to the Skeledurge. They go for a hex, and that's going to sting a little bit. Do a little bit of damage to us, but not too much. Second head smash should KO, um, as we do in fact miss, which is um, a really unfortunate turn of events. And they can just get fully paralyzed. Okay, so head smash mission is not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Let's go for a head smash. Head smash comes through, we don't miss this turn. Take out the Skeledurge, cleanly done by Arcanine. Absolutely amazing work. That, that, that miss on the head smash nearly was the end of it, but luckily it was fine. And they don't necessarily know we're Scarfed either. In comes the Gallade, which definitely can take a head smash. Maybe not a Flare Blitz, but it definitely takes a head smash, that's for sure. So let's go into Corviknight. Corviknight is our best spoke one switch into a Gallade, that is for sure. They probably go for a Sacred Sword, but we should be able to still take that unless they're banded. So we withdraw Wildfire. We can still use it later against the Armourouge, for example, um, or the Empoleon. So we'll go into our Corviknight real quick. They go for a Psycho Cut, which is going to bounce right off us. There we go. So Psycho Cut bounces right off us. The Snow does stop. They probably switch out here. So let's go for a U-turn, expecting them to switch out. They withdraw the Gallade, which is great. Are they going to go Armourouge to get that weak armor? Empoleon, that's fine. So Empoleon comes in. Looking amazing. We go for a U-turn. Get a bit of chip damage off on the Empoleon. Now, I'm wondering whether or not close combat from Arcanine will actually KO here. I have a feeling it won't, so I don't want to risk it. Um, I'd rather go into something like Superior or Golurk. A Golurk, I don't think it can take a Surf, to be fair. I don't think it can take a Surf. We're better off switching the Golurk in on something else. So, I think what I'll do is I'll go Superior here. So, we're going to good old Salazar. There we go. That way, they can't really go for a Chilling Water or anything like that. Um, and we outspeed everything on the team. So let's go for a Leaf Storm real quick. So Leaf Storm comes through. It's going to do like no damage at first, but that's fine. Um, any damage is good damage on the Empoleon. They go for a flip turn and a bit of chip damage on us. Now they get to go into pretty much whatever they want to try and take us out. Now that Gallade, if it's Scarfed and has Triple Axle, we're in a bit of a pickle. In comes the Grafai, which is great and all. And what's it going to do to my superior? That's the real question. Because it can't swagger or like because it'll boost. It'll lower our attack, which will make it not as useful. So um, do we glare it? I think we glare it here. We glare it. There, there we go. Glare comes through. Paralyzing the uh, Grafia, which is going to be really useful. Let's see what they go for. A swagger. That's going to lower our attack, which means they can't mirror her, but either. If they are Mirror Herb. But they can Mirror Herb it, but it'll ne negatively affect them. So they're not Mirror Herb, which is good to know. We're at plus two special attack. Let's go for a Dragon Pulse real quick. We'll break through Confusion. And even if we don't, it doesn't do too much damage to us. There we go. Dragon Pulse comes through. And that should do a lot of damage to the Grafia. There we go. Grafia goes and takes a lot of damage. Poison Jab comes through, though. That nearly KOs us. 
So we need to break through this confusion. Or we could have switched out, but, you know, it's whatever. Then we snapped out confusion, which is great. Superior's coming through with the Dragon Pulse, which is amazing. Taking out that Grafia at plus two special attack. We're in a pretty good position with Superior right now. That is for sure. So let's see how this plays out. Galade comes in. So that thing's definitely Scarfed. Or it has Shadow Sneak, one of the two. And um, we 100% switch out into Corviknight here all the time. Because it just does so well against this Galade. So they withdraw Galade, which is good. They're going to make a double. Are they going to go Armor Rouge expecting... Yeah, they go Armor Rouge expecting the Corviknight to come in, which is a very good play. Um, because now I bring Corviknight in. We out, we get outsped and we get KO'd by Armor Cannon, no problem. So we do need to keep Noctis around. So what instead I'm going to do is expecting them to... They probably can't mind expecting a switch. So I'm going to switch back into Superior. That way if we go down with Superior, it's not the end of the world. We get a free switching with Arcanine. And if they do go for a Calm Mind, we can glare it. So we withdraw our Corviknight. We're going to need that for the Gallade and potentially the Persian, depending on the set. So um, Salazar is going to come in, the Superior. Well, they go for an Aura Sphere, which is uh, probably expecting something else to come in. Maybe the Arcanine to take an Armor Cannon. Um, but we weren't going to do that. So no way, Jose. No way, Jose. Um, we could do a couple of things here. We could go Blastoise um, and Shell Smash. Or we go Arcanine. I'm going to go Arcanine and I'm going to go for the Head Smash. They can't Terra because they already Terra the Skeledurge. Um, which is great. So now we go straight for a Head Smash just to see how much damage it's going to do. It doesn't miss, which is nice. And it cleanly takes the Armour down to its Sash. Which is good to know it has a Sash. Um, which means it's probably weak armor. It is weak armor, which is very unfortunate. And that's going to give them a nice speed boost. They go for an Aura Sphere and Arcanine goes down. So Arcanine did pretty good this game. You know, it, it took out the Skeledurge somehow. Um, and it's took the Armor Rouge down to its Sash. But the Armor Rouge is now very fast. Very fast. The problem they've got with the Armor Rouge is, though, it can't really do much to Glorian Slow King. So I am going to go into the Slow King right now and go for a Sludge Bomb. There's no real reason not to. So there we go. Slow King comes in. They can't touch us. We 100% of the time goes for a Sludge Bomb here because it, we, we can't mess around with the Armor Rouge. They go for an armor cannon to get as much damage on the slow king as possible, which makes a lot of sense, as it does a clean third of our HP. But we go for a sludge bomb, and that's going to take out the armor rouge, no problem. There we go. So the sludge bomb comes through, armor rouge goes down. Lovely job by a uh, Galarian slow king right there. It comes the Persian. So Persian's an interesting one here. Um, I don't see any reason not to just stay in and go for a thunder wave because even if they knock off. Then I'd rather have Glorian Slow King go down because it's not, it can't touch the Empoleon or the Gallade. So we may as well just Thunder Wave here. They go for a nasty plot, which is interesting. So if we can get this Thunder Wave off, we're actually going to be in a much better position with this. So let's go for a Thunder Wave. We miss. Oh dear, that's a, that's a nasty plot of Persian right there. So what do we do here? We could Terra Dark, but that would make us really weak to that Gallade if we did that. So I'm leaning towards... I think we go for another Thunder Wave. I think we can live a Dark Pulse. They go for a Dark Pulse. Takes us cleanly out. So I don't think we can live a Dark Pulse. <laughs> Change my tune real quick there. So Persian's looking terrifying. It is Life Orb as well, which is good to know. Um, I think our best bet is Go Lurk. So I'm going to go Go Lurk. And I'm going to have to Terra Fighting. Pretty much. I'm going to have to Terra Fighting. So we Terra Fighting, we Dynamic Punch, and we go from there. So we Terrastalize into a Fighting type. Hopefully they don't have anything to hit Fighting types. Um, I don't think it gets Dazzling Gleam. I think here they will go for a Dark Pulse here, which we can definitely take as a Terra Fighting Go Lurk. Like so. And uh, they go for a Hyper Voice, which is going to sting. Doesn't get the KO because it's not stabbed. And we, uh, with our No Guard ability, are able to hit the Dynamic Punch, Terra Fighting... Dynamic slap more like. As the Golurk slaps the Alolan Persian silly, which is amazing. Gallade comes in. This thing definitely takes care of the rest of my Golurk, that's for sure. But we still need Golurk for the likes of the um, Empoleon. Because we can definitely take a Surf and go for a Dynamic Punch on that thing. So I am going to switch into Corviknight here to try and take care of this Gallade. Um, like I said, they more than likely go for a... Um, we, well, we more than likely see a U-turn go through here. So um, they go for a Psycho Cut, which is going to do notes. They have to switch out. I'm pretty confident that the Galade's choiced in some way. 
because they usually are. So we go for a U-turn here. They do withdraw the Galay going into the Empoleon, which means we get a free switch into Golurk, which means we get a free dynamic punch off, which is amazing. So Empoleon comes in. We get a free U-turn, like so. And we've got a couple of options. So it, we, we could predict them to switch into the Gallade. I think I think Golurk can do something here. So I'm gonna get what I'm gonna do is because the Empoleon is weakened. Instead of going for a dynamic punch, I'm going to go for a Poltergeist because A, Poltergeist should kill the Empoleon from here. B, the Gallade will switch in and then that'll go down. So let's go for a Poltergeist. Um, they go for a Hydro Pump. I didn't realize they'd have Pump over Surf. That's going to take out Golurk, so that's unfortunate. But um, it's not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. Golurk does go down. But if Golurk couldn't take the Empoleon out, then Golurk was pretty much useless to us anyway. So... We're going to Blastoise real quick. Blastoise should be able to win this for us with a Shell Smash. I'm pretty confident. So let's go for the said Shell Smash. So we go for the Shell Smash. We should be able to take a Grass Knot from this thing if they have Grass Knot. Um, because we are going to get the White Herb, which is going to boost our defenses back to neutral. And there's the, there's the boost that we need. The Special Attack and Speed mainly that we need. There we are. And then the White Herb is going to activate... Bringing our defenses back to normal, which is great. So we should be able to take this Hydro Pump to the face, no problem. As it does nothing. Absolutely nothing. So we could actually Shell Smash again. But I don't think we need to. Let's go for the Aura Sphere. Aura Sphere comes through. And Polion goes down, which is fantastic. There we go. So Polion down and out. We've got to surf the Gallade in the face now. And we should win with Blastoise. If not, we win with Corviknight. So definitely a W with this team. Definitely a W with this team, I think. As uh, we go for a Surf now, and I should do a lot of damage to the Gallade, but they can probably Leaf Blade us or something, so we Surf. They take it. They do take it. They Sacred Sword. And that's going to cleanly take us out. So I'm guessing they're Choice Banded by that damage. Um, but like I said, we definitely win with Corviknight here, so let's go into Corviknight real quick. Pretty confident Corviknight can take any hit from this Gallade at least once. So I'm going to U-turn just to make sure we don't get any um, recoil damage. As that Sacred Sword does a lot of damage, the Rocky Helmet is going to be able to finish off the Gallade. Well, not really, but the U-turn is afterwards. And that's going to be the game. So GG. Oh, sure, that was a fun one. Pretty close. Corviknight's like barely lived on a sliver of HP, but you know, it is what it is. GG, oh, sure, that was a fun one. And we have ourselves a bonus battle. Today we're having a battle in a bonus battle versus Strawberry, also known as Rainy Days, from the Discord server in the Smogon Monotype tier. So we're doing Mono Dragon versus Mono Ghost. And if you're wondering why they've got Fluttermane and Annihilate, they're actually allowed in Monotype. Um, strangely enough. In Monotype, you can't Terra either. So there'll be no terrestrialization in this battle. But they can bring like Fluttermane and stuff like that. So that it's gonna be a pretty interesting game, that's for sure. Um Ghost versus Dragon. Who do you think will win? Let me know in the comments section down below. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, strawberry. So they're gonna lead off with Chandelure, which could be the Zoroark. On Mono Ghost, Zoroark is actually a really good Pokemon to pick because it's immune to other Ghost types. Um, it's a really good Pokemon to have on Mono type. So knowing that they would lead with something specially offensive because the majority of their team is, except from Serenage and Annihilate, I figured my Assault Vest um, Dragelgi could do pretty well here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a Draco straight away just because it'll do a lot of damage. They do go for a Shadow Ball, which they still could be the Zoroark, and that does a lot of damage. Um, considering we're Assault Vest, but this Adaptability Draco Meteor is going to cleanly KO the Chandelier, which is amazing. However, it's actually the Zoroark. So the Zoroark was disguised as the Chandelier, and it's going to go down. They obviously didn't expect me to stay in and go for a Draco Meteor, um, but I did. However, this does leave us susceptible to the likes of the Annihilate or the Cerulege. In comes Kurohana, which is the Annihilate. And um, we know it's definitely the Annihilate because the Zoroark's gone down. Now, I don't want to attack this thing just yet. Because I know it's going to get that Rage Fist boosted. And that is not going to be good for us. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go into the Chomp. I'm going to go into the Chomp. I'm going to get my Rocks up. And I'm going to get my Spikes up if I can. So, because they don't have a Hazard Clearer. Because Monotypes, very hard to have Hazard Clearers for. They go for an EQ though, which is going to bounce right off my Guard Chomp. I'm thinking, yep, there we go. Um, I'm going to go for my Stealth Rocks. If they have Ice Punch, they have Ice Punch. It's no big deal. We get some Rocky Helmet Chip. But we definitely want to get them Stealth Rocks up. They're going to be really useful for that Chandelure. And they're weakening like the Flood Domain and stuff. They go for a Rage Fist, but unfortunately for them, 
We haven't done any damage to it yet, so it's only 50 base power as we get some rough skin and rocky helmet chip on the annihilate. And luckily, rough skin and rocky helmet don't actually add to the rage fist power. So what we can do here is we can get some spikes up, and that's pretty much all I need to do. I'm, I'm going to let the annihilate KO my Garchomp. Um, because we don't really need Garchomp for anything else other than this. So we go for his spikes, get them spikes up on their side of the field, which is always great. Um, they're probably going to go for a Rage Fist again. They do go for a Rage Fist again, but it's not going to do enough damage to KO, as I don't think. It doesn't, because Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet do not stack on the damage for Rage Fist, I'm afraid. So we're getting some nice damage off on that thing. We go for another Spikes here 100% of the time. Spikes come through. We get two layers up, which is great. And I think that is the maximum we're going to get because this Annihilate is going to definitely take us out with another Rage Fist this turn. As they go for a Drain Punch instead, getting that health recovery back, which is great for them because it means they're going to have a little bit more HP on their Annihilate um, for us to take care of. So what we can do now is though, once they've gone into some, whatever they go into now, if they stay in with their Annihilate, which they have got a Berry for... <gasps> is that going to boost his speed? It boosts the speed. Oh, that's not good. So that means that we can't go Dragapult because Dragapult's way too frail for a Rage Fist to not KO us. So what do we do? Do we go into the Raging Bolt or do we go into the Gudra? No, Gudra's not a good one. Dragelgy could be good. I think we go Dragelgy just purely out of the fact that they, they can't go for a Drain Punch on us. They have to go for a Rage Fist or an Earthquake. Oh, they've got Earthquake, actually. They've got Earthquake, actually. I'm pretty confident we can take an Earthquake. So I'm going to go for a Draco Meteor right now. They do go for an Earthquake. I'm pretty confident we can take that. No, we can't. Never mind. I'm completely overestimating Dragology. I forget. It's a specially defensive monster. Physically defensive paper. <laughs> but they have a speed boost. So we have to be really careful with what we do here. So um, I think I go Raging Bolt. I know, I know they have an Earthquake, but we do have Air Balloon on this thing. So, we'll float in the air with this Air Balloon. And we'll just go for a Thunderbolt straight up. We'll go for a Thunderbolt because they might switch out expecting a Thunderclap. They go for a Drain Punch, which is going to do a nice bit of chip. And it's going to recover some of their health back, which is really unfortunate. But I'm pretty confident a Thunderbolt will KO this Annihilate from there. Um, our, but our Balloon does pop. Thunderbolt comes through. And that takes out the Annihilate. So the Annihilate posted me a bit more of a threat to my team than I wanted it to be. The Dragology going down is really unfortunate because that Salt Vest Dragology would have really helped against the Flutter Main. But it's not the end of the world. In comes the Chandelure. And we know it is the real Chandelure because it's... Um, the Zoroark's dead. So we're going to get hurt by the Spikes and the Stealth Rock, which is amazing. We can go for a Thunderclap potentially or a Calm Mind. I'm going to go... I'm going to... I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt because they might trick us. We outspeed them somehow, and we KO the Chandelure with the Thunderbolt. So I'm guessing that was a bulky Chandelure of some kind. By the way, we outsped it, but I'm not complaining. Okay, in comes Cerule Edge, the Gourmet. And the, these Stealth Rocks and Spikes are really going to start digging into this team. So um, they definitely outspeed us with the Cerule Edge. They might predict the Thunderclap and go for a Swords Dance, but I'm going to go for the Thunderclap anyway. Because I don't want to get hit by that Poltergeist. Um, well, not Poltergeist, but whatever they decide to go for. Um, they go for a Shadow Sneak. We are prioritizing, meaning that they're slower. Somehow. Huh. They might not They might not Shadow Sneak now. They might Sword Dance. Let's go for a Thunderclap again. No, no, the Raging Bolt is just putting in the work right now. So this Cerule Edge is going to go down. Down, down, down it goes. And now, I, if I were them, I would go into the Flutter Main, personally. Flutter Main comes in the Great Friend. It's not going to take as much damage from the Stealth Rock as Spikes as the uh, Cerule Edge did. I mean, the Spikes, it's just the same. But the Stealth Rock is mainly the big difference. Um, I know we can't... Oh, the Protosynthesis. They were going to be booster energy. Nice. In special attacks, this thing now hits really hard. Uh, let's go for a Thunderclap anyway. There we go, just to get some damage off. It won't KO the Flutter Main. Um, as they go for a Moonblast, and that's going to KO the Raging Bolt, no problem. So Raging Bolt does go down. They can still pull this back with Flutter Main because it is very fast. However, I'm pretty confident Gudra can take it out with a Heavy Slam. So I'm going to go Gudra. So we're going to Blooper, the Gudra. There we go. And I'm going to go for a Heavy Slam. There's no real reason not to, because if they switch out, Stealth Rocks and Spikes will take them out on the next switch in. I think. They go for a Moonblast. It's boosted Special Attack. It's going to do a decent bit of chip, but... 
We still live, and we go for a heavy slam, which is definitely going to KO that Flutter Main, no problem. So Flutter Main goes down. And now we've just got the Goldengo to worry about, but we can't touch the Goldengo with Gudra, and we can't really switch in another Pokemon. So if this is a nasty plot Goldengo, we're in a bit of a a bit of a bit of a bind, to be honest with you. So Goldengo comes in. Stealth Rocks and Spikes are obviously going to hurt it a little bit. Not too much. Uh, we can't Body Plus. We can't Heavy Slam. We could... Sh no. We're going to have to... We're going to have to find a way to get into our Dragavolts. Without them nasty plotting everywhere. So let's go into Kyurem. Kyurem should be able to handle this. Um, not handle it. It gets taken out by Make It Rain. But it, it gets us a free switch into Dragapult. Which is what we're after. So we'll bring Kyurem in now. Kyurem cannot touch this Goldengo. That's for sure. They go for the nasty plot. Um, which is definitely their win condition. So I'm going to go for an Icicle Spear now. Just to get some damage off. And we do have speed, which is great. We are loaded dice, so this should hit at least four times. Hopefully five. That'd be nice. Two. Right, four times, which is fine. They go for Make It Rain. Flash Cannon. They don't, oh, they don't want the special attack drop from the Make It Rain. That makes sense. As that's going to clearly take out, cleanly take out the QRM. So that's unfortunate. So now, though, all we have to do is go Dragapult and we can choice specs. Because I couldn't switch the Dragapult into a Goldengo. It could Shadow Ball, you know. Could have done anything, really. Um, so I wanted to just do that. And then now we go for a Shadow Ball. And that should take out the Goldengo, no problem. Shadow Ball comes through. Dragapult wins the game. And that is going to be the game. So GG Strawberry, that was a pretty fun one. It was very interesting, like, monotypes, an interesting concept that I wanted to get into more. So let me know if you want to see more monotype or monocolor battles. Because um, they are pretty fun to do on Showdown. And this is my first Wi-Fi one, and it's actually pretty fun. So... Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see more of that. But anyway, here is the team from the first battle. Be sure to use it. Let me know how, how it goes. If you do use it, that'd be great. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.